Behind me is one of the most unique monuments on the Antietam battlefield. It's one of the largest ones here, but it's not a memorial to a general. It's not for a state or for a regiment. It's in honor of a commissary sergeant from the 23rd Ohio who never fired a shot at this battle. But before I tell you his story, I want to back up. The history of the 23rd Ohio Infantry is a fascinating one. Antietam was the only major battle in which it fought. But there are few units who can boast such a storied history among its members after the war. The regiment was organized in June of 1861 at Camp Chase in Columbus. Future General William Stark Rosecrans was its first colonel and commanding officer. It spent much of the early part of the war in what today is West Virginia as part of the Kanawha Brigade. By 1862, they had come further east as part of the 9th Corps, and they were engaged at South Mountain, where their new colonel, was wounded. The 23rd then came here to Antietam, where it fought on the south end of the battlefield before returning to West Virginia. They would later fight in Sheridan's 1864 Shenandoah Valley campaign before being mustered out in 1865. It's what happened after the war with some of the former members of this unit that's most interesting. Stanley Matthews, who served as Lieutenant Colonel of the regiment, went on to serve as a United States Senator and then an Associate Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Robert Patterson Kennedy began his service as a First Lieutenant in the 23rd and would go on to serve in Congress and as Lieutenant Governor of the state of Ohio. Harrison Gray Otis rose from a private in the 12th Ohio to eventually become Lieutenant Colonel in the 23rd. After the war, he became the owner of the newspaper that we know today as the Los Angeles Times. There were other notables as well, but there are two more that I guess I should probably bring up. Because two, yes, two members of the 23rd Ohio Volunteer Infantry went on to become President of the United States. You remember a moment ago I talked about their commanding officer who was wounded at South Mountain just before Antietam. That was Lieutenant Colonel Rutherford B. Hayes, who would go on to serve in the Congress, was twice elected governor of Ohio, and then finally became the 19th president of the United States. That leaves one more person we haven't talked about, the commissary sergeant. So that commissary sergeant, he had enlisted at the age of 18 as a private. He was a native of the town of Niles, Ohio, in the northeast part of the state. He had risen up to the point where he was a sergeant here at Antietam. He was the food guy. Uh, and he went around during the battle as the 23rd was under fire, making sure under fire that every member of the regiment had hot coffee and hot food. On a day like this, there weren't too many men who got hot coffee and hot food. And many of the men who were here remembered that. A week after the battle, he was given a battlefield commission and made a second lieutenant. He eventually made his way to the rank of captain and was even made a brevet major at the end of the war. Now, all of that probably would have gone unnoticed, and I doubt it would have warranted a monument of this size, except for the fact that that young man went on to serve as governor of Ohio, and then was elected twice as President of the United States. His name was William McKinley. William McKinley was assassinated in Buffalo, New York in September of 1901. Two years after he was killed, this monument was placed on the Antietam battlefield in his memory.
interesting thing as you're walking down to Burnside Bridge, which is down the hill from the McKinley Monument, there's another monument telling you where that monument is, just in case you didn't know. Just kind of an interesting thing. Really, uh, you can tell they just really wanted to um, play up the fact that a future president had been here, uh, even though he wasn't performing any great acts of heroism on a battlefield. Not to take anything away from what McKinley did that day, but I just thought that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. 